On this episode, I finally pick up a Blackmagic Design HyperDeck Studio HD Plus and share my thoughts on the device, but more importantly, show you how to get it up and running in record time. The Blackmagic Design HyperDeck Studio HD Plus offers a plethora of professional features and I.O., the most notable being the ability to record and playback ProRes up to Ultra HD 30 frames per second via the 6G SDI connection, support for HDR, one USB-C port that can be used for external recording or as a webcam out, support for ProRes, DNX, and H.264 codecs, two SD card slots, the ability to remotely control the device via Ethernet control protocol, plus upload files via FTP, and two 6G SDI outputs that allow fill and key playback up to 1080p60, which, let's be honest, is the killer feature on this device, and in my humble opinion, the real reason to pick one up. Now, in a previous episode, I explained in great detail the differences between the upstream and downstream key, both of which allow us the ability to stencil in static and motion graphics into our live stream. But in order to use a linear key or alpha key as it's more commonly referred to, you will need those two 6G SDI outputs. Not sure what an alpha key is? or whether or not you need it, well, don't worry, I've got you covered. In short, an alpha key sends a separate video signal to the keying device that contains the key information. This video signal just looks like a grayscale image and defines the level of transparency the fill signal is supposed to have overlaid on that background, essentially allowing you the ability to implement transitions and graphics like this, which, as you can see, have varying levels of transparency. And in case you're wondering, this level of transparency cannot be achieved with the Chroma or Luma key. Now, if you only plan to use the HyperDeck to play back non-alpha keyed video, then you can just connect the HyperDeck to your A10 Mini Pro via the HDMI port. But if you plan to unlock the full power of the HyperDeck on the A10 Mini Pro, you will need to purchase the following additional hardware. Two SDI to HDMI converters, two SDI cables, and two HDMI cables. Once purchased, connecting it couldn't be simpler. Just follow the diagram on screen. And while you're back there, don't forget to connect the HyperDeck to the same network as your ATEM switcher via the Ethernet port. Now, before we turn our attention to the software side of things, we need to do one last thing, and this one's really important. Please hit the REM button on the front panel of the HyperDeck. This will allow us to control the HyperDeck from the ATEM software control panel. With that out of the way, let's head on over to the Configure tab in the Blackmagic HyperDeck Setup Utility and copy the IP address. Once copied, load the ATEM software control panel and head on over to the gear in the bottom left. A window should pop up. Select the HyperDeck tab and paste the HyperDeck's IP address into that dialog box. Before closing the window, select Input 3 from the Input dropdown. And just like that, you are now able to trigger video playback from the media source palette in the ATEM software control panel. But wait, in order to start creating alpha key stingers and lower third animations, there are a few more steps. Step one, we will need to create and export a video in ProRes 444. And don't worry, this can easily be accomplished in Final Cut Pro or the NLE of your choice. For those playing along at home, that don't yet have a video in ProRes 444, I've included a link to a sample video in the video description below that you can use in the meantime. You're welcome. Step two, format your SD card by inserting it into the HyperDeck, then tap the menu button, turn the knob clockwise till you reach storage, tap the set button again, then turn the knob clockwise till you see format media. Tap set. Select the SD card you inserted by once again hitting the set button, choose your format, then hit set. You should now be prompted with a warning that all data on the SD card will be erased. And well, you know the rest. Step three, load the file you created or the one I provided onto that SD card via your computer. Once copied over, 
properly eject the SD card by dragging it to the trash and insert it back into the hyperdeck. Step four. Here is where we come to a fork in the road. In order to play videos with transparency, we will need to choose between the upstream or the downstream key. But don't worry, I'll show you both ways. Let's start with the upstream key by first activating the key, then heading over to palette. Open the upstream key one drawer and select the Luma tab. I know, I know. It's confusing since I just said earlier, Luma is different from a linear slash alpha key, but don't overthink it. From this tab, we will want to select HDMI 3 as the fill source, HDMI 4 as the key source, and ensure pre-multiplied key is selected. Once that's done, we will select the media player, scroll down to Hyperdex and select the video. Once selected, hit play. You should now see your transparent video play on screen. Bonus. If your video began to play as soon as you selected it from the list, you can either keep this functionality or disable it by going to the cog in the lower left, select the Hyperdeck tab and uncheck auto roll. Now, if you decide to use the downstream key, it is a little bit easier. Let's first turn off the upstream key, turn on the downstream key and head back on over to the palette and select the downstream key drawer. Select HDMI 3 as the fill source and HDMI 4 as the key source and ensure once again that pre-multiplied key is selected. Then select media player and scroll back down to Hyperdex and yet again select the file and hit play. You should once again see the animation play on screen but this time via the downstream key. Now for those that want to use the Hyperdeck to play video files, it's really simple. All you need to do is select HDMI 3 from the program section, head back to the media player tab, scroll down to Hyperdex, select your video file and hit play. Boom, you are officially up and running with the Hyperdeck. For those of you that want to use the Hyperdeck to record, it's as easy as one, two, three. Connect your ATEM to the Hyperdeck via the SDI, HDMI or USB-C input Set your input and file format via the menu. And hit the record button. It's that simple. That is if you have only one SD card inserted. There is no button or menu item that allows you to select between SD card slot or USB hardware. In order to select a specific SD card or USB drive, you'll need to manually eject the devices you don't want to use. And if I'm being honest, this is poor usability and extremely confusing due to a lack of clear documentation. And before I get roasted in the comment section, yes, I know you can select it via companion or ethernet control protocol. But let's be honest, those options require either downloading an app or using a command prompt. Really? Now that I've shown you how to set up and use the Hyperdeck, I do have some thoughts about the device if you are still on the fence about purchasing one of these devices for your studio. One, I wish Blackmagic did a better job of communicating all the additional equipment you will need to purchase to unlock the full potential of the device, like the converters and the SDI cables. It does add up. Two, while theoretically impossible, I would have loved the ability to play and record at the same time. Three, the Hyperdeck allows you to record from one SD card slot to the other seamlessly if one slot runs out of space, which is pretty fantastic since it's essentially treating both cards as one single drive. Unfortunately, when it comes to playback, the Hyperdeck doesn't afford you the same flexibility since it treats each SD card slot as an individual storage device. So if all your video files don't fit on one SD card, you are going to have to eject that card so the Hyperdeck selects the other SD card with the remaining video files, which kind of sucks, especially if you're creating macros that reference files on those cards. Cause A10 macros, well, they work by referencing the clip index. And four, the Hyperdeck is extremely finicky about file formats. You will not be able to mix and match formats. Your best bet is to pick one single format and stick with it. For me, that was ProRes LT. With that all covered, you are officially a first degree Hyperdeck black belt. You're all right, LaRusso. Keen on leveling up those skills? Then hit that subscribe button, because in my next episode, 
I'll be showing you how to seamlessly integrate the HyperDeck into your 810 Mini Pro live stream workflow via, you guessed it, macros. And with that, we are at the end of another episode. And if you haven't already, hit the like, subscribe, and bell button so you're notified when I drop a new episode. Catch you guys next time.